Before changing a dressing, perform hand hygiene and ensure the patient's privacy. Introduce yourself. Verify the patient's identity using two identifiers. Can you tell me your name? Uh, Gary Fulton. Okay. And your birth date? 6-14-1954. Uh, okay. As you explain the dressing change process to the patient, assess his pain level. Check that the prescribed analgesic administered 30 minutes prior has taken effect. Put on a gown and goggles if there's a risk of spray. Position the patient comfortably and drape him so that only the wound site is exposed. Instruct him not to touch the wound or the sterile supplies. Place a disposable biohazard bag within reach of your work area. Fold down the top of the bag to form a cuff. Apply clean gloves. Now you're ready to take off the old dressing. Remove the tape by pulling it parallel to the skin, toward the dressing, holding down the uninjured skin. Be sure to pull in the direction of any hair growth. If necessary, obtain the patient's permission to clip or shave the area according to your agency's policy. Remove the old dressing one layer at a time with your clean gloved hand or with forceps. Observe the appearance of the drainage as you proceed. Carefully discard the outer secondary dressing first, followed by the inner primary dressing, the layer that's in contact with the wound. If any drainage devices have been placed, avoid putting tension on them by slowly lifting away the layers of the dressing. Keep the soiled undersurface of the dressings concealed from the patient's view as you work. Fold the dressing to contain the drainage. Peel off your gloves inside out and perform hand hygiene. Apply another pair of clean gloves and assess the wound. Okay, now I'm just going to assess your wound. Refer to the video skill Assessing Wounds for details. Then dispose of your gloves in the waterproof biohazard bag and perform hand hygiene. Now create a sterile field by placing a sterile dressing tray or individually wrapped sterile supplies on the overbed table. If a sterile solution has been prescribed, pour it into the sterile gauze. Depending on your agency's policy, you may put on sterile gloves to provide wound care, or you may use a no-touch technique, which calls for wearing clean gloves to hold sterile forceps. If you use antiseptic swabs to cleanse the wound, use a new swab with every stroke, or simply spray the wound surface with antiseptic. As you cleanse the wound, work from the area of least contamination to the area of most contamination. If the patient has a drain, cleanse around it using circular strokes. Begin near the drain and move outward away from the insertion site. Blot the wound dry with gauze, holding it either with forceps or in your fingers while wearing sterile gloves, whichever technique you use to cleanse the wound. If ordered, use a similar technique to apply antiseptic ointment. Now that your wound is clean, now I'm going to dress your wound. To apply a dry dressing, use loosely woven gauze as a contact layer. If the wound has a drain, place a pre-cut 4x4 gauze pad so that it sits flat around the drain. Apply additional layers of gauze as needed. On top of this, apply a thicker woven pad, such as a surgery pad or abdominal dressing. Okay, I'm going to start beginning with packing your wound. To apply a moist to dry dressing, open a sterile package of fine mesh or loose 4x4 four four inch gauze and pour sterile solution over the gauze. Apply sterile gloves. Wring out the excess solution and apply the moistened fine mesh, open weave gauze in a single layer directly onto the wound surface. If the wound is deep, gently pack it with gauze using your sterile gloved hand, 
forceps or a cotton-tipped applicator until all wound surfaces are in contact with the moistened gauze. Be careful not to pack it too tightly and make sure the gauze doesn't touch the skin around the wound. Observe the packing to ensure that no dead space from sinus tracts, undermining, or tunneling remains. Then apply a dry, sterile gauze pad over the wet gauze. Cover the wound with an abdominal pad, surgipad, or gauze. Secure the dressing by taping one to two inches beyond the dressing, that's two and a half to five centimeters, or by using Montgomery ties. Label the tape with your initials and the date and time. Remove any personal protective equipment used. Apply gloves and dispose of all used dressing supplies. Okay, now that we're done with your dressing change, how would you rate your pain now? Zero being none, 10 being the worst. Uh, it's about a Help the patient into a comfortable position and ask him to rate his pain on a scale from zero to 10. I will come check on you in a little bit. You let me know if you need anything. Okay, thank you. Perform hand hygiene. Document your wound assessment and how the patient tolerated the dressing change. Hello, Mr. Fulton, how are you doing? Real good, thank you. I'm gonna check on your dressing, see if there's any drainage and see how your drain's doing. Okay. Though. As part of your follow-up care, inspect the patient's dressing at least once every shift or as ordered. Can I get you anything? Are you comfortable? No, I'm real good, thank you. Okay, you call me if you need anything. All right, right, will do. Okay.